Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 13th, and today we're going to check out the system rolling into the Pacific Northwest and how that's going to impact us. We'll take a brief look around the rest of the country too, including a drought forecast that you're going to want to see. And checking out the visible satellite, now you can see the stratus is encroaching on the west coast here, marking the fact that those offshore winds are now relaxing across the Pacific Northwest and down into Southern California. As our next system approaches here, you can see it on visible satellite pretty well as these clouds are going to increase through the afternoon and evening tonight and precipitations to start just after midnight for some portions of the Washington coastline as it slides all the way down across the west into Southern California, across the mountainous west and on into the rest of the country where it's going to spawn even some severe weather coming up here into next week. So one more nice day across the Pacific Northwest. Western Washington, Oregon should get pretty warm today. It might get up towards 60 even in Seattle. This fog is just now burning off. Continue east of Washington, nice and clear too. So yeah, get out there and enjoy today because big pattern change coming tomorrow. And jumping right into things here, you can see Las Vegas has a wind advisory for the system as it pushes down through tomorrow. Some special weather statements highlighting some areas, just giving a heads up that the pattern is about to change. And the heat advisory is still for Southern California. There are still some winter weather advisories out there for the Northeast, including New York and portions of Michigan, North Dakota, Minnesota, and some wind chill advisories as well. So jumping right into things here, here's Reno talking about record high temperatures, Sunday light winds, and Monday that wind shift comes through and brings that cold front and the colder air aloft is gonna really cool things down into next week. And Medford, Oregon, talking about beneficial rain on the way. Cascades, two to four, Siskiyous, Warners, getting a little bit of snow there. Uh, generally light rainfall amounts, but it is going to be beneficial rain. Anything we can get right now, we've been in such a dry period that we need any precip that we can get, especially in the mountains. So checking out this system that's going to roll through here is going to bring some severe weather all the way down into Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and southeast portions of Oklahoma on Wednesday. Details are still up in the air a little bit to see how this trough is going to eject and just how much moisture is going to get out in front of it here on Wednesday. But you can see on day five, uh, another bullseye here for some severe weather potential going through the southeast portions of the country there. So heads up if you have interest out there. Uh, changing weather, talking about the Santa Ana winds down there, and these will be ending shortly if they haven't already, and then much cooler, much cooler weather next week. And Las Vegas, again, if you guys are heading down there, I know a lot of people like to go down to Las Vegas and vacation down there. And you can see the high winds coming up here on mainly Tuesday as the temperatures really drop off here going into midweek next week. And here's a drought forecast that just came out. Uh, they're talking about the drought tendency to continue or worse. And look at the West just increasing. I mean, the, the droughts are supposed to continue or worsen in these areas. And it's supposed to develop through these areas of Arizona, Nebraska, Kansas. And a little bit of improvement maybe through Montana there, some of the higher terrain. And western Washington is okay, but this is not good for eastern Washington and eastern Oregon. We're already under some pretty um, severe drought. And Oregon suffering from some extreme drought. So this is not good news. This is supposed to continue. So diving right into what's going on now, taking a look at the temperatures around the Pacific Northwest today, you see Seattle warm up nicely all the way up to 57, maybe some 60 degree readings around Puget Sound today. All the way down through Portland, Willamette Valley, especially south. Look at that, up into the 70s probably. A little bit colder on the Oregon coast than it's been in previous days. As you saw those, that stratus layer getting a little bit closer. And you can see the heat through Southern California out the deserts. And through the, the valley down there up against the, the Sierra Nevadas. So as we go forward into Monday morning, you can see the cold air starting to march on shore here. This is at the surface, by the way. And you can see that cold air just chopped down through California here on early Tuesday morning. Really cool down every, everybody, especially the mountainous west here. As we might even drop down into the 30s again on Tuesday morning there as the system rolls through. And you see that California, for example, gets, you know, they don't heat up near as much after this front moves through the area. So checking out the temperature at 5,000 feet here too. Let's watch this roll in. You can see that cold air just come out of the northwest here and just overspread the area. Pretty chilly weather. Nothing nothing too extreme. We're not looking at a lowland snow event or anything like that, but we could get some mountains, mountain snowfall that we much need, really. You saw the drought you know, forecast there, so we really need this snowfall. As you can see, that cold air kind of dive down through the entire west coast. So this is a welcome relief here, and we're going to take a look at the extended here coming up too and see if we're going to pick up 
a little bit more active weather-wise for the extended as well. This ridge never seems to be far off our coastline here since uh, early January. Here's 10,000 feet. You can see the system roll in here. Nice cold air aloft. Model's kind of lagging there. And you can see that nice shot of cold air over the region there. So this might spawn a couple of thunderstorms over western Washington, Oregon, and even into eastern Washington and Oregon too. There's actually some lightning showing up on the European actually for the basin out here, maybe Yakima area for Monday. We'll look at that here in a minute. And you can see that lobe of cold air just dive all the way down towards Nevada and Arizona into Tuesday afternoon. And here is the snowfall total forecast here on the NAM at 3 km. This is for Kuchera. You can see that really building up pretty good in the Cascade. So this is much needed. The Olympics and even the coastal range all the way down into California is supposed to get some out of this. As we go into Monday night into Tuesday morning, you can see some of the higher terrain in Nevada getting in on it. Sierra Nevadas. All these areas need snowfall badly, include this, including the Intermountain West here through Idaho, Montana, Eastern Oregon. We all need this snowfall to help mitigate the drought concerns going on into spring and summer. Here are the 925 millibar winds. You can see as they turn onshore pretty well as you go into this evening and into tomorrow morning. We've got a pretty strong onshore flow coming here. And this is really the mark of the cold air kind of being launched into the area, which is going to spawn a couple thunderstorms potentially for areas of Portland, Tri-City areas, Yakima, portions of eastern Washington, maybe the Puget Sound Convergent Zone. And as you see here, we're getting into about two o'clock Monday. You can see the strong Puget Sound convergent zone signature across the central sound. That might spawn a thunderstorm or two. And as this cold air streams aloft, we could be getting some thunderstorms through the Willamette Valley too, or even the Oregon and Washington coast. So checking out the surface based cape, as we go into Monday here, you can see that area of colder air. This cape kind of marks it nicely. And you can see that instability moving on into portions of western Washington. You can see it extend into eastern Washington too, where that thunderstorm threat is going to reside also. I wouldn't be surprised to see the SPC put out just a general thunderstorm area for portions of the northwest here. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow morning, maybe tonight. Who knows? Well, it, with that severe weather going on down in the south there, they might not be paying much attention to us here and our, just our general thunderstorm threat. But... You know, it can be pretty exciting for us. We don't get them very often up here. But you can see the Oregon coast pretty, is highlighted here Monday afternoon into evening with some pretty good instability rolling over the area. So here's what we're looking at. This is sea level pressure and actual precipitation. You can see it starts just after midnight here tonight. You know, notice those high clouds will be rolling in today. And you can see the cascades of Oregon and Washington picking up some good snowfall. And BC will get on that snowfall action too as this weak surface slow moves by but it is pretty cold aloft and you'll see this the snow is going to last for a little bit with a strong onshore push here all the way down into tuesday morning for the cascades of oregon so that's that's good news for the area here and as we look on in let's check out monday afternoon for the sound too you can see the convergence zone really setting up here about 2 p.m and there'll be some locally higher snowfall amounts through the Cascades, wherever that band does set up. And you can see it kind of progresses down through the sound. Looks like it's over SeaTac by about this time, 3 o'clock. And then 4 o'clock, you can see it progresses. And it kind of hangs out near SeaTac down there. So we might get some higher uh, snowfall amounts in the central Cascades. That convergence zone pushes through there. And you can see the onshore flow creating some pretty good amounts through portions of the Oregon Cascades, too. And off into Idaho, the higher terrain, the Rocky Mountains getting some decent snowfall out of this too so and hopefully this is a sign of things to come we'll check out the extended here in a minute and this is the european here now let's update this there should be new data coming in here oh, there we go okay and now we'll look at you can see it highlights some areas of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, mainly the Willamette Valley. Previous runs had some lightning threat through the Puget Sound here, and it doesn't look like this one is highlighting it too much, mostly down towards the Willamette Valley, Portland, and eastern Washington. So I'll do my forecast tomorrow morning, and I'll probably go out and try to get a lightning strike or something tomorrow. Maybe I'll live stream it if it looks good enough. But yeah, we, there is a general thunderstorm threat tomorrow. So this is last night's European run. This is going to go out 360 hours as a control member of the ensemble runs. And you can see the system moving through Monday here. 
make sure this is going one step at a time. And then you can see the system move down over the four corner area and starting to move into Texas here. And this is going to spawn some severe weather there for eastern Texas into Louisiana, Arkansas. And then on into Thursday, same as that finally swings through. And then we've got another system coming over the top of this on into it looks like next Saturday. As you can see, that kind of opens up on, on us again and brings a nice trough all the way down into Southern California. That would be much needed snowfall all the way down into Southern California there too, as that trough reinforces another shot of cold air down through the Four Corners region, then ejects back out through the Midwest. So maybe some more severe weather there going on into next week too. I'll have to watch for that. As we have another system kind of ride over the top of the ridge for the Pacific Northwest and get us here. And when I see something like this, this is more of a, a windstorm potential here. If this kind of system comes through like that, we could get, you know, I'll start to watch for that. Just but if this system trends a little bit south and a little bit stronger, then we could get some windstorm potential out of that. But you can see this ridge is never far away. It's just dominant off our coastline. And that goes all the way out through February. But we are getting some systems passing over it and weakening the ridge at times. So it's not like we're going into just straight drought conditions here where we are getting some action with these systems moving through and let's check out the gfs here and see what it says so this was this morning's run 12z you can see good agreement with that system coming down and then moving through the four corners and out over the southern plains as it spawns some severe weather down there and you can see we've got another weak system kind of moving through the ridge here very weak probably just light precipitation amounts then a good trough opens up on the GFS here on into next weekend. So that's where the differences start appearing. That GFS really opens that all the way down to Southern California there and then brings another system over top of us in the fall on the following week. So there are systems coming through on the European and the GFS. So that is good news. And, you know, we're... <laughs> This is not going to be good if we're going to continue to play with these. These are not very wet systems either. So this is going to really play into our drought concern for eastern portions of the state. So hopefully this ridge backs down soon and maybe we'll get a wet March and April, which tends to be the case in, during La Nina conditions. So, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to go right into drought conditions. We, we do tend to get cooler and wetter Marches and Aprils, especially in La Nina years. So there's still that potential. So... Again, I'll do another forecast tomorrow before I go out and chase this convergent zone, or maybe I'll even go to eastern Washington if the thunderstorm threat looks better there. I'm going to try to capture a lightning strike or two, and maybe I'll live stream if it looks good enough. So hopefully you guys are liking these videos, and leave some comments in the section below. And let me know if you guys see anything. Any, if you guys get any thunderstorm activity tomorrow, you know, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.